This episode is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, the number one seller of games and gaming accessories. And GatheringMagic.com, the number one resource for Magic the Gathering, news and articles. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another Cube Draft. Uh, taking a look at this pack, we definitely have some good options. Uh, the ones that stand out to me are Ancestral Vision, Mox Jet, uh, Ajani Vengeant, and Sword of Feast and Famine. Um, not totally sure how good Sword of uh, Feast and Famine is in Cube. Uh, obviously, it's really good in Constructed, but uh, in Cube, it, it, I mean, it could be good. Uh, I really have no idea. Um, I, I th honestly, I think it's between the Mox Jet and the Ancestral Vision. Ancestral Vision is just a really good card. Like just drawing three cards is is pretty insane. Um, I honestly, I think it's better than the Mox Jet. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I I just I just love cards that say draw three cards on them. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people will disagree with this pick, but I, I think the pick here is Ancestral Vision. Alright, let's see what we got here. Another sword and a strip mine. And Vindicate. Sword of War and Peace is probably the worst sword, so I'm not I mean whatever, I passed two swords, who cares? Uh so we got a couple signets as well. I I love I really like Old Man of the Sea, but I'm not gonna take him this early, especially when there's better cards in the pack. Uh strip mine is only really good in aggressive decks. I I'm not sure if I really want it. I, I'm probably just going to go with Vindicate here. Yeah, I know. I'm going to draft Asper again. <laughs> but, yeah, like just sort of War and Peace isn't really that good. So, uh, I'll take the Vindicate. Alrighty. What have we got here? Baneslayer Angel is, uh, I mean, the win conditions are fairly replaceable, but Baneslayer Angel is a really good one. And it's just, it's, it's insane against the aggro decks. So, uh, that's probably where I'm going with this. Tide Hollow's color is okay, and none of these red or green cards really appeal to me, so uh, I'll go with the, the Bane Slayer here. Ooh, Grave Titan, that's a good one. A little surprised to see one fourth pick. That's probably one of the best finishers in the cube. Um, yeah, I, I don't think the rest of these cards come close, so it looks like we're, we're drafting Esper again. <laughs> The Grave Father. I love the art on this guy. I love how like the zombies are like coming out of his chest. It's so cool. I may not necessarily be in blue. Um, I probably force blue more than I should. Ooh, just had to clear my throat there. Um, yeah, I probably force blue more than I should. Uh, it's just there's so many good blue cards that like I can't I can't pass it up. Um, all right, well Jace Bellerin is a good one, but Moat just makes it so aggro decks can never beat you. Um, Mother Runes, I hate that card. It's so annoying. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Moat is is better than Jace Bellerin, so I, I think that's where we're going here. Um, Hopefully we get past some blue cards in pack two, but you know, I think uh, the person who are left getting a six pick J Speller and they probably will go into blue. Who knows? Um, all right, so we definitely have some options here. There's Supreme Verdict, Elspeth Terrell, Venser, uh, Amiri Angel, and Adderkar Waste. I'm gonna discount the Adderkar Waste for for now, just because like the Pain Lands are much worse than than the other than the other uh, dual lands. So. Um, I, I don't really want them that badly. The question is, do I want a Wrath? Do I want a Venser? Do I want an Elspeth? Uh, I think Elspeth is powerful enough that it's worth taking over the rest of these cards. Uh, I, I think it's reasonably close. Uh, it's because there's so many Wrath effects in the cube that uh, Supreme Verdict is among the worst worst of them. Uh, I mean, it's the worst four mana Wrath anyway. Uh, I, I like it more than any of the five or six mana Wraths, obviously, but... Um, uh, where was I going with that? It, it, it's there. There's there's uh, there's plenty of opportunity to pick up uh, four mana the wrath. Like there's day of judgment, there's wrath of God, and there's uh, there's um, damnation. So I, I don't think I need to to to, to value wrath that highly. Uh, so in this pack, 
thinking of taking up the uh, the Flicker Wisp. It has pretty good synergy with uh, Grave Titan, and can it still attack after I've played a mode? So uh, that seems pretty good to me. All right, Thawing Glacier is pretty slow. The rest of these cards I'm not really interested in. Like I could in theory play Whip Quarter, but uh, this is not looking like a Whip Quarter deck. Um, I'm gonna take the Thawing Glaciers, but I may or may not play it. Like it's just it's so slow. Alrighty, Momentary Blink seems okay. I'm a little surprised to see Silver and Library come come back around. The card's actually really good. Um, I might just take it and, and, and splash it. Uh, I might go into like a green, white, black deck just because uh, this this blue has is just not it's just not happening. So uh, I I could always go four colors. Uh, you never know. Um, I think Civil Library is good enough that I can take it over Verdant Catacombs, but uh, I normally don't like making that pick. All right, uh, not interested in Drag Mangler. May want Celestia Signet. May want Old Man of the Sea. Probably don't want Sacred Foundry since red is the color I'm least likely to play. Uh, yeah, I'll take the Signet. It, it makes casting the library easier, accelerates into my later drops, and uh, white looks like a main color here, so it looks good to me. Uh, Treetop Village, probably not. I don't think I want a Treetop Village in this deck. I'm going to take a Nantuka Vigilante just because uh, I may want it for the sideboard. I'm going to hide it for now. Alright, uh, I guess we can take up a Still Moon Cavalier. It's pretty good against certain decks. Hmm, which of these cards do I not want to lose to? Probably Price of Progress. Get out of here. Ooh, wow, that's a late Flame Tongue Kavu. I'm going to take it. Maybe I'll play it. Flame Tongue Kavu should not be going that late. All right, let's open Sol Ring. Uh, I don't see a Sol Ring. I do see a GT, though, and that's probably one of the better cards in the cube. Um, almost certainly going to take it. Ooh, there's also Upheaval, which is really broken. Man, Upheaval or GT? That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> um, I. Th I think I'm going to take the upheaval just because uh, I'm probably not going to have very many creatures in my deck. Uh, so the GTA is not going to be as good, whereas upheaval just w almost always wins you the game. So, yeah, I, I got to take the upheaval here. Like, there's there's no chance it's coming back. So, as much as it pains me to pass a GTA, like, I got I to gotta take the best card for me. So, it's going to be the upheaval. All right, uh, Gideon Jura is a good one. Uh, Oz is Badlands, as is Taiga, I guess, but I am probably not going to play the Flame Tongue, so probably won't need it. Avengers and the car is really good win condition as well, uh, but I, I don't really think uh, this is going to be an Avenger deck. Um, I may I may not even play the Sylvan Library. Uh, we'll see, but uh, I think we can slam down Gideon Jura here. It seems pretty good. All right, my eyes drifting towards Underground Sea. Um, probably want it more than Vampiric Tutor or Forbid or Shivan Reef. Um, again, I, I don't think I'm playing the red, so I don't think I need the Blood Crypt. Selesnya Sanctuary is, is another option, but I, I'm not I'm not totally certain I'll be playing the Sylvan Library. So uh, I think <clears throat> the safest pick for me here is, is the is, is the Underground Sea. Like, uh, actually, I might even might not even play Black. To, now that I look at it, because my only like actual black cards are Vindicate and Grave Titan, but I think it's it's more likely than not I'll end up uh, with uh, some some black cards in my deck. So I'm going to take the the Underground Sea. All right, uh, Hallowed Fountain is uh, leaping out at me. Um, Thrand Dynamo is fine. Uh, pff, definitely don't want Lodestone Golem. I could take Fire Ice, but again, I, I don't think I'm going to play the red. I think the choice here is between Vampire, Nighthawk, and Hallowed Fountain. Uh, if I had taken the GTA in the, that first pack, I definitely would have, would take the, the Vampire, Nighthawk here because I would just want uh, as many like uh, two and three drop creatures as possible so I could just like turn four, slam down GTA, and attack. Uh, so like three like a three power uh, creature with evasion is, is perfect for that. 
Um, but because I didn't take the GTA, I, that's that's less of a consideration. I think I'm just gonna take the Hallowed Fountain here. Like it's it's precisely the type of dual. Like it's not a Tundra, but it's the next best thing. So um, that's what that's what we're going for here. Okay, uh, definitely have some options here. So I'm looking at probably Phyrexian Arena. Uh, I'm not sure why they put a white border Phyrexian Arena in here. That that just seems like a misplay, but <laughs> uh, there's also Blood Gift Demon, which is just like a five mana Phyrexian Arena that dies to removal, but can block, so that's that's a thing. Um, there's also Terminus. I'm not sure if I'll need a Terminus. I think I, I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna go with the arena here. Like it's it's pretty hard for most decks to beat. Like I'll, I'll probably side it in against like mono red, but uh, against any like non red decks, it it's gonna be pretty good. Uh, Lingering Souls seems like the best bet here. There's also Phyrexian Ranger, but I think Lingering Souls is definitely better. Um, it's it buys so much time against the aggro decks that uh, yeah. Um, like, cause the later this, the later the game goes, uh, the, I mean, the more, more chance I'll have, I'll, I'll have of playing like my big bombs. So, uh, yeah, Lingering Soul seems pretty good to me here. Alrighty. Um, ooh. So my choice here is between Demir Aqueduct and Shadow Mage Infiltrator. Both of these are pretty good. Um, I do like the Demir Aqueduct a lot, but Shadow Mage is just... Yeah, uh, I ugh. even Blade Splicer is not a bad option. Yeah, I, th I think I'm gonna go with the Shadow Mage, just because uh, I, I have some affection for this guy. <clears throat> Man, I, what's going on with my throat today? I I, I think this pick is reasonably close, but uh, I like I like Shadow Mage here. Ooh, Snapcaster Mage. That's not that's not a bad one. There's also Sphinx of the Steelwind, but it's probably a little too expensive. I don't think that's actually going to happen. Um. Unfortunately, Snapcaster Mage and Ancestral Vision don't work. <laughs> I, I've actually looked into this before. Um, hmm, I don't actually have all that many cards I can flash back now that I look at it. Uh, I mean, flash, flashing back in Upheaval is useless. And, I mean, I guess I could flash back and Vindicate. But that's that seems like my only card I, could, I can do it to. Uh, I'm going to take it anyway, just because there's... There's a pretty good chance that I'll end up with something I can flash back, so it's pro it's it's a good bet that it'll make the deck. Um, all right, Silent Spectre, not that interesting. I think it's between Into the Royal and Inquisition. I think Inquisition is just better, so I'll go with that. Alrighty. Well, I I guess I can take a route. Um, probably not playing the rest of these cards, so. I'm going to hide this Flame Tongue Caveat. I don't think I'm going to play it. Alright. Bunch of cards I'm not interested in. Might play the Selesnia Sanctuary. We'll, we'll, we'll pencil it in for now. Ooh. Alright. Which of these cards do I not want to lose to? Probably Lodestone Golem. Get out of here. Ooh, Blood Gift Demon came back. That's pretty good. Probably better than Aeon Chronicler. Yeah, I'll take it. And which of these cards I do not want to lose to? Ball Lightning. And last big Ruby May Dragon. Why not? Why not? Alright, show me a Sol Ring, or an Ancestral, or something else awesome. Dark Confidant, unfortunately, is not what I'm looking for. I have way too many 5 and 6 drops to make that card good. Um, could take a Sim Mixing Net. Restoration Angels, probably not what we're looking for. I might just take Solemn Simulacrum. Like, it does a good job of ramping me, and it blocks, and, you know. Could also take Windswept Heath. It's not a bad. It's not a bad call. I think Solemn is just. Uh, it's it's just going to be better. Like it it fulfills kind of the same role as 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 a land. Uh, like it fixes my mana, and uh, it also blocks and it 
could in theory attack. <laughs> Although I, I don't really, I don't, I'm, I'm not really relying on solemn simulacrum beats to win me the game, but uh, I, I, I think it's the best option here. Like the rest of these options are kind of mediocre. Uh, maybe, maybe one of the lands will come back. Well, we'll see. But I'll be happy with the signet as well. Ooh, Liliana. Ooh, time walk. Ooh, library. Oh, you can tell I read right to left. <laughs> Uh, wow. This pack is, this is the Nutter Butters. Um, I mean, Lilian is good and all, but so is Time Walk, but it's no library, so, uh, library's pretty broken. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't see how I, how I can not take the library here. Ooh, Sphinx's Revelation. The Bane of Standard. Um, uh, what else could I want in this pack? Guess Golgari Rot Farm. I guess Ultimate Price. Uh, kind of leaning towards the Ultimate Price, actually. Although Sphinx's Revelation does seem pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, I'll take the Sphinx's Revelation. I... I Kind of curious to see how, how it plays out in cube, so. Uh, that, I mean, I could be overrating this card, but we'll see. Alrighty. Opposition's a card I seem to always lose to. I think I'm going to take the Archmage. There's also Consuming Vapors, which is pretty good at beating the uh, aggressive decks. Yeah, I mean, because I don't actually have any removal other than Vindicate, maybe I should take this Consuming Vapors. Yeah, let's go with that. Ooh, Sower Temptation. Time Twisters, probably not what we're looking for. Force Wills are also pretty good, as are the two Walls. Uh, I mean, obviously, I'd lean more towards Wall of Omens and Wall of Blossoms. Just gaining control of a creature is, is pretty darn good, so... And I don't actually have very many blue cards, so I, I don't think I should be taking Force so well. Uh... Hmm. There's also an Underground River, I guess. Hmm. Careful Consideration is another really good one. Yeah, I think I'm going to take the Sower. Ooh, Vraska. Maybe we can make this green thing work. <laughs> okay, so Scalding Tarn fetches blue, black, and white, which are my uh, three main colors. Uh, it's also Mana Leak, which is, which is a thing. Uh, Nevenerals Disc can help, but I think I have enough Sweepers. I can take Overgrown Tomb to help cast, uh, Sylvan Library, although I, I really don't think I need, I need Sylvan Library, so, uh, I think I'm going to take the, the Scalding Tarn and just kind of forego the, the green. Um, yeah, Scalding Tarn gets, gets both my dual lands, so, seems good to me. Alright, ooh, Phantasmal Lavage. I even have a Grave Titan to go with it. I have a lot of things that actually work fairly well with it, so... Yeah, Phantasmal Image actually seems like a pretty good one for me, so I'll take that one. Definitely like it more than Land Tax. Uh, Alright. Am I going to have enough islands to run Vidalk and Shackles? Well, both my dual lands are islands. But I think I'm going to have to play a bunch of basic planes just because I have so much double white. I don't think I can get away with Shackles. Maybe I should take it, though, because, like, what am I taking it over? Like, uh, like a Memory Lapse or Apocrisite? Like, whatever. Yeah, well, I'll take the Shackles, but it's not, like, insane to my deck or anything. Okay. Man, I guess people really don't like Dark Confidant. Uh...
think it's between Impulse and Signet. I've already kind of said that I don't want... Uh, um, uh, I don't want the green, so I guess I'll go with Impulse here. Ooh. Guys to say Traft is pretty good against, uh, like, the mirror and against combo. Spencer's Royal is actually a pretty good win condition in cube as well, so... And it's it's a big thing that attacks through when it attacks when I have moat in play, so I might want that one. Yeah, I, I don't think I want guys to say draft. Hmm. I guess I can take a memory jar. I might not play it though. Yeah, Eternal Dragon can work. And do we want Edict or Razor Main? Let's take Edict. I don't think I need Razor Main. Oh, Overgrown Tomb came back, so maybe we can play the green. Who knows? Maybe I should have taken the uh, Signet over the Impulse. We'll see. Um, well, if I take that Vraska, like, it's probably more likely that I, I play the green, but... I I still don't think I'm gonna play it, but uh, I'll I'll figure out what exactly my my deck is gonna be, and I'll be back in just a sec. All right, welcome back. So this is what we're gonna be submitting. Uh, got a couple cards on the sideboard that um, I would have liked to have played, but just couldn't find room for. Um, Fracing Arena was actually the last cut. I initially had it in my deck, but then I realized that I wasn't playing Sphinx's Revelation. And the, kind of the more I thought about it, the more I decided that uh, Fracing Arena was was the card to cut from from this uh, particular build. Uh, for a couple of reasons, uh, we are, already have a bunch of other card draw, like we have Ancestral Vision, uh, Impulse, and uh, Sphinx's Revelation. And uh, I've, having played with Arena a lot in Cube, I've actually died to my own Arena a lot. <laughs> so um, since I don't really have very many ways of getting rid of it, uh, like I have Vindicate, I have like in theory, I have like Elspeth, but. Um, because because this isn't an aggro deck, because this deck can take a long time to kill to kill my opponent, um, Frexian Arena might not actually be uh, optimal. Uh, I'm probably going to side it in against a deck where I have to be the beatdown, like against Combo, for instance. Um, but uh, it seemed like I had to cut it. Uh, it was close, though. Like, uh, I mean, if I had like one less playable, I definitely would have played it. Uh, Vidalcon Shackles is another card I, I cut just because uh, I only have six islands in my deck, so it's, that's really not optimal. Um, again, I might side it in against certain decks, depending on, on how the matchups play out. Uh, other than that, I have some other relevant cyborg cards. I have, like, Stillmoon Cavalier to bring in against, uh, black or white-based aggro decks. Um, and I could, in theory, bring in Flicker Wisp against certain decks, uh, either when I want a faster clock, or if, uh, uh just against decks where I'm gonna want it as a blocker, so... Uh, but I like this for the main deck, and uh, it's got some good cards. It can shut down aggro decks fairly well between all the removal, wraths, and moat. And uh, it's got some good win conditions, and uh, it's got the kind of like the late game inevitability with uh, the Eternal Dragon against uh, the slower decks. Uh, against the combo decks, we have Inquisition. Uh, it's I mean, that by itself is not going to beat a combo deck, but... Um, again, uh, most of the decks I draft are, are kind, tend to be a dog to like the, the, the Storm decks, so... Well, we'll have to do the best we can, and uh, I will see you guys in round one. Peace.